All right, we're back with another collection video. So today we're just focusing, as I said, on cheek products. So I have all of my bronzers, highlighters, blushes, and face palettes sitting out here. I did do a declutter of these uh, a few months ago, sometime in the summer. So I'm not anticipating really parting ways with a lot, but there may be some in here since that previous declutter that I really just haven't been getting any use out of. So. We shall see where the road takes us, but let's get started. Let's start, uh, let's see. Let's start with the face palettes and then we'll move on to bronzers, highlighters, and round off with blushes, which is by far the largest of the categories. So I'm just gonna clear stuff out of the way and then we'll get right in with the face palettes. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the Moon Prism Blush Palette from Lunar Beauty. And I have talked about this one before. I just think it's such a really great collection of shades. Normally when I have like a six pan palette, there's at least one or two that just are too deep for me or too light for me. Well, let's be honest, usually too deep for me because I am pretty fair. But in this case, this one works beautifully as a bronzer for me. This one is quite light, but I can use that mixed with this one to sheer it out a little bit. And then it just, layers really nicely on the skin just tones it down a little bit just to make it a little bit more wearable for my skin tone so there really isn't a shade in here that i don't use and these powders are just so nice and soft and beautiful so definitely want to keep this one also if you've been around my channel for any amount of time you probably know just how much i love the champagne and macaron sweet cheeks palette from jouet it's just absolute perfection in a palette as far as I'm concerned. My bronzer did get a little smashed somehow, but she's holding fine. I pressed it back in. You can see I have been using it. You can see quite the dip going on there in that highlighter. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This shade, Citrine, is sold as a single. So if you're not interested in a palette, but you want an absolutely beautiful highlighter, you can purchase just the highlighter on its own. <laughs> it's so beautiful. This just gives me that like lit what from within kind of glow. Like it's not chunky, it's not glittery, it's not too harsh. It's just like the absolute perfect highlighter for me. Love this palette. It is currently on sale on the Sephora website. I believe in the US as well, but definitely in Canada. And you can actually pick it up the entire palette now for less money than the single highlighter but I get use out of all of these shades I love this this is definitely my favorite face palette that I have and this one here is from Smashbox this is the Cali contour kit again this has been in my collection for a very long time and I have mentioned it quite a few times in particular this shade right here you can see the dip going on just how much use I got out of it I don't tend to use it for anything else, although the blush is a very pretty rosy tone blush and the bronzer itself is actually quite nice, but this is what I really like this contour kit for is the contour shade because it just, it's cool enough to make realistic looking shadows on my skin, but not so cool that it looks ashy. Like it's not gray, but it is a cool toned brown and I just think it's perfect on my complexion. So. I will be keeping this even if it's just for that one shade. This is the newest addition to my face palettes and this is the um, Patrick Ta Major Headlines Blush Palette. This I believe is limited edition, but there we have it. There are three powder shades and then three cream shades. I like that he includes these little like covers over his cream products. Now, again, I've talked about this one, but it bears repeating. When I had tried his single pan blushes, they were just, I couldn't build it up on my skin. It wouldn't show up. I'm fairly fair and it wouldn't show up with me. So I was very frustrated with it. I do have a duo blush, which we will get to eventually. And that one is more pigmented, but these ones are hella pigmented, <laughs> like so pigmented. So I just have to go in with a very light hand to get like, full opacity and I've taken my watch off so should be able to see it a little bit more easily here than on the back of my hand. 
just ignore this. I'm like allergic to the watch band and there's nothing I can do. I've tried so many and I always react. But at any rate, those are the powders. And then I'll just wipe my fingers and we'll go in with the creams. Then there's this one here from Cheekbone Beauty, and this is just like an, a custom made one, so you can select which pans you want to include. So I just built highlighter, blush, and bronzer trio. And I quite like these powders as well, although I do like the other face palettes I've talked about a bit more. So there are the three shades there. I think the standout for me is the highlighter itself. The blush is quite glowy, as is the bronzer. And I don't tend to go for a glowy bronzer. You can see the blush is quite light. It could really just be used as like a pinkish highlighter. But this highlight itself is quite strong. But I think, hmm. As much as I love cheekbone, I'm going to let this one go because I really don't get much use out of these two pans. And the highlighter is a bit icy on me, even at like this time of year where I'm starting to lose my tan from the summer. So yeah, I'm going to see if a friend wants this. If you watched my eyeshadow palette declutter, I did a whole spiel in that where I said um, when I try to when I do declutter, I try to give the products to friends first before I just throw them out. So I'm not going to say it after each product that I decide to declutter. Oh, okay, I'm going to give this to a friend. Just suffice it to say that once I'm done my declutter, I actually just line everything up, take pictures, and I have some friends that I send the pictures to, let them pick and choose. So I do try to rehome them rather than just fill up a landfill. So this is going to go into the to be donated to a friend box. Then we've got this one here from BH Cosmetics. This is Blushing in Bali. And one of the shades came completely obliterated. So I've done my best to repress it. But like I said earlier, there's always like one or two shades in these six pans that I tend not to use. And that is definitely the case here. I don't get use out of these two shades because they are far too deep on me. The one shade that I actually really like, you can see, oh, it is very, very crumbly. It is very pretty. But it's unfortunate that that's like the one pan that was just completely obliterated in the shipping process. So I don't, I don't need to keep this. Like it's a champagne highlight as you're going to see that is like my wheelhouse and I have a plethora of them. This one, even though I have tried to repress it, it doesn't want to stay in the pan and the blushes. There's nothing unique enough about them to justify sort of keeping the entire messy palette. So I'm just going to knock this out and then I'll see if a friend wants the remaining shades. But this one, unfortunately, is uh, it's destined for the bin. Okay, then we've got this one here from Shantakai. This is the Radiance Chic Cheek and Highlight Duo in Coral. First of all, I mean, the packaging is so beautiful. And it's just a little duo here. And I actually quite like this. I can see I've got quite a bit of use out of the blush. And the highlighter itself is also very pretty. Let's see here. That blush packs a punch as well. The highlighter is a little bit more on the subtle side, but the blush itself is beautiful. And I really can't part ways with this because it's just so, so pretty. So I'm definitely going to hold on to that. And then that brings us to this one here from MAC. This was part of their holiday collection from a few years ago. And I don't know why I don't reach for it more than I do. I used to go, like I went hard on it for a while. You can see how much wear is in there. And now I just keep forgetting about it, but I really do like it. So I'm going to hold on to it. That's why I love going through my collection and doing declutters and doing collection videos because I just sort of reacquaint myself with my collection. 
and just remember what it is that I have. So those are the face palettes. So let's move on to bronzers. So here are all of my bronzers, which I always find funny because I don't think that I buy a lot of bronzers and then I put them all in one container and I'm like, ah, uh, I don't need that many. What are you doing? So I'm glad that I'm not like super hyped about bronzers because I don't buy them all that often, but I also don't go through them very quickly. So let's just see what we've got here. This is the newest one into my collection. This is Makeup by Mario. I did place a, uh, this is part of my Sephora VIB sale event, purchase, whatever, haul. I don't know what you want to call it. Anyways, I bought it during the VIB sale. Um, I bought a few things. I got a highlighter, a blush, a lipstick, an eyeshadow quad, and this, because I haven't tried Makeup by Mario yet. I have to say, I'm not overly impressed by that, considering the price of the products. I will um, go ahead and add some glue and just glue it back into place, but I was a little surprised by that, but I'm glad that the bronzer held up. I don't really have any words on it because I haven't used it yet. I haven't actually had a chance to use any of the Makeup by Mario products that I got yet. But that's looking pretty nice. It's warm toned, but not orangey. It's got sort of a satiny kind of finish, not particularly glowy, certainly nothing glittery in there. But I think that's going to be quite nice. I'm actually going to turn that light down a little bit, just to make it a little bit more realistic in here. There, that should help. Maybe. <laughs> okay, well we'll get through this. Anyways, uh, definitely not getting rid of it because I haven't used it yet. We've got this one here from Kiko Milano, which frankly, I love the packaging. I love the color. I love how it's sort of like a matte metallic, if you will. I just, I love it. And this is the Dolce Diva Baked Bronzer in Special Honey. Fun fact, Barry calls me Special K every now and then, and he's my homie B, because we are giant nerds like that. <laughs> All right, so there is that bronzer. And I mean, I'm not expecting to see any real differences. Oh, I guess that would help from one bronzer to the next. This one again, a little bit on the glowier side of things, but overall very pretty. So I'm going to keep that one. Talk quickly about this one here. This is the contour wand from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is in fair medium. And it looks like alarmingly dark, especially when you first apply it but it looks super dark but it does blend out really nicely again it's not to the point where it's like ashy or gray but it does create realistic shadows so despite the fact that I hate the application method I do like the product itself I've gotten through the vast majority of this one I would consider repurchasing it, but you'll see I do have other contour shades that I can use in the meantime, so it's not like a burning desire. So for example, there is this contour powder here from Natasha Denona, and I have used quite a bit of it, as you can see, and I will continue to use this powder. So there's that. Then I have this one here from Chanel. This is the Soleil Tan de Chanel. This is the original version. They have reformulated, and I think they're calling it something else now. I can't remember what it is, but you can see that I have definitely got good use out of this. It still has life in it. Oh, it still smells phenomenal. Apparently the reformulated version has left people quite disappointed. I haven't tried the new version. I don't feel the need to when I have this much left of the original. I would say though that if you are fairer complected, you can pull this off, but unless the new formulation has deeper shades available to it, this kind of maxes out on my skin tone, which is like an NC20. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do this if you were medium skinned or deeper. See there, this one just, blends so nicely though. Like it is a really nice product. I don't know why they would reformulate it because I don't really think it needed to be reformulated. 
uh, but I am not getting rid of this. I love the way it smells and I do like how it looks on my skin, so I'm going to keep that. I have another cream blush. This has been part of my project pan for the last few months and this is from Tarte. It's the Breezy Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. Again, I'm giving you a little bit of a spoiler on my project pan, but I've made very good progress with this. And I actually really like this bronzer. I do find that the Chanel is a bit more blendable than this one. But having said that, this one's also about half the price and it is definitely more pigmented than the Chanel. Here, I'll just do a side-by-side -side really quickly, just so you can see. So it is deeper than the Chanel, and it does, it does blend out. You just have to work a little bit harder on it, but that's not to say you have to work hard. It's, if it was just this and I didn't have the Chanel, I'd be like, wow, this is fantastic, it blends so easily. But I have the Chanel, so I know what can blend better, uh, but not a bad option if you're looking for a cream bronzer. Okay, this one here I just recently picked up from Essence. This is the Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder in Natural, and it's for lighter skin, which I qualify for. And I've only used it a couple of times so far, and it is quite light, so if you are fair, this might be a good option for you. It's verging on being too light for me, but in winter I think it's fine. It just adds a little bit of warmth to my skin, but certainly isn't obvious about it. But I don't think I'll be able to pull this one off in the summer. So this bronzer here is more my speed in terms of the shade. So this is from Fenty. This is one of their Sunstalker bronzers in Shady Biz. And you can see it's just like a deluxe sample. I have used this quite a bit. I'm getting a very good dip going on in it. I'll put that beside the other just so you can see. That is typically more my bronzer shade and it shows you just how light that Essence one is. And then just to establish a full range, I'll show you this one here from, uh, from Dior. This is the uh, Forever Natural Bronze in 05 Warm Bronze which is the lightest shade available or even listed at Shoppers Drug Mart. But when I got it, I'm a little scared because it's not particularly light. You can see that I've used it. I've got most of the lettering off of it, but I have to be aware of how much product I'm picking up because it is quite deep compared to what I typically go for. But if I use a light hand and blend it, it's really not an issue. You can even see it's not too much deeper than this, even though it looks significantly deeper in the pan. Once it's blended out, it's really not that bad at all. This is another one that I have been really gravitating towards recently. So this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. Again, it's just the little mini size. Let's put the one up here. This one is definitely warmer than the um, Dior, as you can see, and it does have a bit of a glow to it without being glittery. So it's a little bit more in line with the one from Fenty, but definitely more luminous than the Fenty is. Next, I have this one here from LYS, and this is the No Limits Matte Bronzer in Motivate, which is the, light the lightest option in their line. So even though this is the lightest, you can see that it's not light per se, especially when we consider the one from Essence way down there. But it's a good shade for me, and again, not too orangey. And we have this beast here from Charlotte Tilbury. It's just a huge, huge pan, and it's the Airbrush Bronzer in number two, Medium. And I don't use this very much. It's, I don't know why I don't like it more than I do here. Let's put it down here. I just find that I really have to 
load this product up for whatever reason. And it is like a very matte bronze, which doesn't really bother me, but you can see it is quite light. Sort of looks like this one here, which was, which was this one? That's the Fenty one. We have three more bronzers here. So this is the duo from Patrick Ta. And this is the Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo in She's Statuesque. So it's a cream and powder duo, as the name would suggest. And again, I love that he's put that little thoughtful element of the cover on there over the contour shade. So this, I can't really rave about it. Um, the pigmentation isn't as strong as I would prefer. So we're running out of space on my arm here. We'll move up above the elbow just for the giggles. So that is the powder bronzer and then the cream contour. So it's quite subtle and I really have to build the bronzer up for it to be apparent on my face. I don't mind the um, the cream contour because it just makes like a, a hint of a shadow for me. It's not too strong and I'd rather it be on the more subtle side than way too pigmented and then have nowhere to go with it. The bronzer is not my favorite. But I can't sit here and like strongly recommend this product, especially not at that price point. And then we have this one here from Vive, and I have to admit, in pulling all of these products out for this video, I completely forgot that I even owned this. Like, completely forgot. So this is the Modern Bronzer in Light 1 and Light 2. So again, you have sort of the contour shade and the bronzing shade. And I know I have used this, but it's maybe only been once or twice. And then I put it in the drawer and I completely forgot about it. So that's uh, an indication to me that I buy too much makeup. <laughs> so there we have them. Bronzer, contour, and they both got really nice undertones. They're both strongly pigmented, but again, very, very blendable. I have been consistently impressed with the Vive products. Notwithstanding the fact that I forgot I owned this, it was one of those out of mind or out of sight, out of mind situations. And now that I've seen it again, I do want to play with this one as well and get some more use out of that. All right, and then last but not least, we have the bronzed light uh, duo from Juvia's Place. So again, you're getting a bronzing side and a contour side. Just wipe my fingers off and go in these two. They're actually quite similar in tone. Well, not so much on camera. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly good alternative for the Vive if you're looking for a duo but don't want to spend Vive prices. They're not so different. The contour shade is, I would argue, significantly lighter but it does build up. So there's a comparison at any rate. All right, so here are all of my highlighters collected. We're going to see a theme in here that I love champagne highlighters. So the question remains, do I need all of these? Uh, I don't need any of this, to be honest, but do I want to keep all of these? Again, like I said, I did do a declutter not that long ago, probably within the last four months, five months, I'd say. Um, so I'm not anticipating a huge change because I haven't brought in a lot of highlighters. But be that as it may, let's go through them. So again, I can see this Mario one sitting out on top. Again, it's new to me, so I haven't actually worn this on my face yet. It's in the shade Pearl but I did want to try out his products. And this one does look very promising to me. It is very pretty. We're gonna skip over this, but I'll start over here. It's very smooth and just a really beautiful champagne highlight. 
God, that looks awful. I'm sorry. It's not like an open wound or anything. It's just irritated from my watch band. All right, then we have from Melt, one of their digital dust highlighters in Stargazer. Champagne highlight, <laughs> as per my preference. And this is one that I have thought about decluttering in the past, and then I always end up saving it. Okay, so moving on, I have two of the Beauty Light Wands from Charlotte Tilbury. This one is in Pillow Talk, and this one is Spotlight. So the marks on the front, this has been in my project pan for, gosh, six, seven, eight months, I think, something like that, and it is almost done. Uh, again, it has that same little gross top that I don't like because it gets super dirty, but the products themselves are beautiful. I may as well, I guess, just do a little comparison for you. Spotlight is the one that I prefer out of the two because it's more of a champagne highlight and that's just what I like. This one, Pillow Talk, has more of a pink undertone to it. But these are beautiful. You can wear them like over foundation, under foundation. They blend out beautifully on the skin so that it doesn't even look like you're wearing a highlighter. It just looks like you are like super healthy and glowy. Love these. Definitely not getting rid of them. And I would definitely consider repurchasing um, this one in particular, Spotlight. And then along the same lines is this one here from Annabelle. This is the Enlightened Highlight Drops in Champagne. So you already know I'm going to love it. And I'm pretty sure that Annabelle is just sold in Canada, which is kind of a shame because they do have some good products. It's a drugstore brand. But you can see it is quite similar. It holds up quite nicely to the Charlotte Tilbury. And it's got much better packaging design, if I'm being perfectly honest. So when I am done Spotlight, I will definitely be using this one in its place. And then I'll decide from there if I want to repurchase the Charlotte Tilbury one or save myself quite a bit of money and just go for Annabelle again. What very well might be my second favorite highlighter after Citrine from Jouer is Cookie from Benefit. Terrible packaging aside, it's just so beautiful. You can maybe see how much of a dip I've got going on in there. Ugh, this lighting situation is killing me. I am so sorry. All right. This is just, oh, it's so stunning. It is so strong and yet, again, blends out so that it doesn't really look like highlighter. Like it just sinks into the skin. It's not powdery. It's almost like a super shock. Like it's almost like a creamy kind of texture, but it's just so, so beautiful. All right, then we've got a highlighter from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, Jaclyn Cosmetics, Jaclyn, I don't know what the hell it's called. At any rate, there it is. This one's in the shade Iced and Champagne Highlight. <laughs> you will see, I do have some that aren't champagne, but the vast majority of them are. And I have no complaints about this one. It's quite pretty, it's very smooth, very impactful, as you would expect from Jacqueline. Not as much as uh, Cookie is, but it stands up on its own. Okay, we're gonna break up the monotony and take a look at some of my fun highlighters. This one is from Kaleidos, one of their Space Age highlighters in Moon Cruiser. Here's what she looks like. And these are very pretty. Don't wear them a lot. You've got that like duochromatic kind of shift going on in them. This one is on the purple side, but it is just a stunning highlighter. So I have Moon Cruiser and I also have Skywalker. Just more of a blue toned highlighter. These are beautiful as like inner corner highlights as well, just to add a little bit of visual interest. And then I also have Mars Melter. 
I really wasn't sure that I was going to get along with this one because that, <laughs> like I thought it was going to be way too dark on my skin. But what I can say about this highlighter is that when you're looking like dead on on my face, you don't see it. And then when I move my head, it catches the light and it is just beautiful. And I don't have anything else like it. And I cannot show it to you properly. It's just not picking up just how beautiful it is. But trust me, it is gorgeous. And again, it looks like it's super glittery. There, now you can see it. It looks super glittery, and yet it's not chunky at all. It's very, very smooth. I love this one. It's just so different and beautiful. And I think this is the last of like the fun shades. This one is from JD Glow, I believe. Yes, and it's in the shade Synopsis. It's another one of those ones that is really pretty on the inner corner as well. This one isn't as smooth in texture as the Kaleidos ones, but it is every bit as pretty. I have two highlighters here from Dior. So this one is the Forever Couture Luminizer in 01 Nude Glow. This one's a bit newer to me. And I like it, but I don't love it. Like it's nice and smooth, that's fine. But once it's on the skin, like it's just not particularly reflective. And it is a little bit deep for my skin, so eh, it's just not my favorite. I will say that. And then the other one that I have is, what is this one? The um, Dior Skin Nude Luminizer in 02. And this one I much prefer. You can see I've worn all the lettering off except along the edges. And this one is obviously more impactful. I can't even really see that other one. And then we have this one here from NARS and this is Capri. A giant pan. It's a very smooth and finely milled powder. And again, it's a little bit more on the more subtle side, but it is really pretty on the skin. Definitely not as subtle as the Dior, but a good option if you don't like a lot of bling in your highlighter. And this is one that I enjoy wearing like when I have court dates and things like that. I'm bringing the price right down. This one here is from Catrice. And this is the More Than Glow Highlighter in Beyond Golden Glow 030. I haven't used this one a ton. I haven't had it for all that long. It's a little bit deeper than what I typically go for. This will be good like in the summertime. It's not terrible. I mean, it's not super dark against my skin, but it is a little bit deeper. It reminds me very much of the shade of the nude no, the luminizing, whatever the hell that dear one was. Oh, crap. And then we have the I Need a Nude Glow from Natasha Denona. And this is an interesting texture. It's not super powdery at all, but nor is it like creamy. I just, I don't really know what that texture is. It's interesting. And again, it's along the same lines as the Dior and the Catrice. Not as noticeable as Catrice, a little bit more so than the Dior. But overall, honestly, it's not a highlighter that I reach for very often. I'm going to pass this along. I have a friend who I think would really, really like that. And I is just taking up quite a bit of space, actually, in my collection, and I don't really use it. so. I am going to pass that one along. And then we have the Heaven's Hue Highlighter from Stila in Kitten. I've had this for a very long time. You can see I've got right down to the pan up there. This is so 
smooth. Like it feels like silk. Like this is just beautiful. It's a beautiful highlighter. In there. Like it just melds into the skin so nicely. Definitely worth checking out. Then we've got this one here from Fenty. This was part of their holiday little trio of uh, products that they put out last year. And it's in the shade Fenty Glow. It's the Diamond Balm. And this one has like a creamy sort of moussey kind of texture. And it is quite glittery. But it would be like this one is really pretty. Like if you're going out for date night or something like that, like somewhere where you're going to be like in, I don't want to say like in a spotlight because I'm never in a spotlight, but you know, that kind of like mood lighting, I, I don't know what to say, like not direct light, but this just like, it just twinkles basically, except when I'm trying to film it. And then we have Champagne Pop from Becca. And I did manage to hit pan on this one, so I have got quite a bit of use out of it. And I honestly don't know if Champagne Pop is one of the shades that was saved with the whole Smashbox and Becca thing that's happening. <laughs> so weird. Anyways, I hope it is because it is a beautiful highlighter. We have the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 from Juvia's Place. I don't know why I feel compelled to keep so many of the same highlighters. I truly don't. And yet, here we are. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I could very easily just say, okay, I'm going to keep one, and that's the end of it. But I do like to have comparisons of, like, formula and all that kind of stuff. But like shade wise, I probably have like six that are the exact same color. I don't need any more highlighters in my life. And yet, I like to test out the formulas, so here we are. Alright, this one here is from Vive, and this is in Holy Chic, which I think is the second lightest shade that they have. My friend Alana from All Together Alana here on YouTube was kind enough to send this one to me. It's too deep for her. It is riding the edge for me. I can pull it off, especially in summer, but if it was even like a hair deeper, it would just be too obvious on my skin. But again, I am very impressed with the Vive products that I've tried. And that highlighter is no exception. All right, this guy here, I think is my most used highlighter. This is Flexitarian from ColourPop. And there she is. This one is so beautiful on the skin. It's so beautiful even if you wanted to wear it on your um, eyes, on the inner corner, on the lids. It's just beautiful. And this one here is from Givenchy and this is Mystic Glow Powder in Mystic Pink. And I honestly think this was just a holiday set. Like I think it was limited edition. You can't get it anymore. And it's one of those ones that I keep like hemming and hawing over and I just don't tend to use it very often. But every time I look at it and like swatch it out, I'm like, why don't I use you more than I do? Because it is really pretty. Okay, and then the last one we have to talk about here is from Rare Beauty and this is the uh, Liquid Luminizer in Mesmerize. And this one comes with like a giant doe foot. Again, this is one that I thought was going to be too deep for me, but once it's blended out, it's really not that bad. But I don't ever wear it. I just... The color, like the undertone, is just not there for me. I have more than enough highlighters. I'm going to pass this along to a friend as well. How we're going to tackle this is, we're just going to dive in. I, I've been sitting here and hemming and hawing over whether or not I want to declutter off camera, then show you what I'm getting rid of, and then show you what I'm keeping, but 
Let's just show everything and we'll declutter as we go. I have no goal in mind for this. If I declutter two, if I declutter 22, it's all good by me. Uh, I know definitively that there are a few in here that I just never ever use, so those ones are obviously good candidates to part ways with, but there are also some that I adore and they're not going anywhere. So for example, let's just start right here with this gorgeous packaging from NARS. This is part of their Claudette collection last year and this is obviously the blush duo. I've got, I don't know how to say that, Quasette and Ninochka. Good Lord, I don't know, but it's so, so beautiful. I wore this one just on its own on my cheeks today, but they also like blend beautifully. I'm not usually big on split pans, but these ones are big enough that my blush brush fits perfectly on either side. But again, you can swirl them. It's so, so beautiful. It barely shows any signs of wear, but believe me, I have worn this quite a few times and it is just so pretty. I could even wear this as like a bronzer, but when I mix the two of them together, it's just this like beautiful sort of rosy tone on my cheeks and I just love this duo so much. So most definitely holding on to that one. Likewise, I'm going to keep all four of my KVD Everlasting blushes. These are like so beautiful. I've talked about them so many times, but I want to talk about them again. So strap in. This one here is Honeysuckle and it's just like so perfect on the skin. It's just very subtle, but very like natural looking. They're so like velvety smooth. They blend beautifully. They wear all day. I just, I love these blushes. Next one is Foxglove, which is more of your traditional rosy kind of tone. And then this one here is Rosebud, which is even deeper. This one's more of like a plummy kind of shade. You know what? I don't actually use this one in particular all that much. I often go for Foxglove over Rosebud. I'm gonna set Rosebud aside for now. I, I might I might be willing to part ways with that one. And then this one is super fun. This one is Poppy. Bright ass red. It's beautiful. I kinda have to fight my daughter for this one because she always comes in and steals this one off of me. And it is incredibly bold, but if you just tap into it and then blend. It's beautiful. That's obviously a very heavy swatch. I don't wear my blush quite that intensely, but it's gorgeous. Well, I am going to keep these three, but I am going to let Rosebud go. I have a friend who has a deeper complexion than me, and I think this would look beautiful on her, and that she would get more use out of it than I do, but I love these blushes, and the packaging is gorgeous too. I've also got two Chanel blushes that I have no intention of parting ways with anytime soon. This one here is Reflex. I bought this one on the recommendation of Michelle Wong ages ago. And she did not steer me wrong. There, there we go. It's got like a nice little sheen to it. And I will say, if you are sensitive to scents or if you just don't like the smell of rose, I would suggest avoiding these blushes because they are quite fragranced. And then this one is Rouge Profonde. And again, a bit on the bolder side, but also very pretty and very blendable. And this one is not nearly as shimmery as the other shade. So next up, we're going to talk Fenty. I've got five of their Cheeks Out Cream blushes. So this one was actually sent to me by mistake by Sephora. They included it in a package that I hadn't ordered this, but they contacted customer service and they were like, go ahead and keep it. So I did. And I thought it was going to be like way too deep on me, but once it is blended out and if you just use a light hand. It actually does look really pretty on my skin. I'll 
although this is the one that I tend to go for more often, and I, of course, gouged it by accident the last time I had it open. This one was part of their holiday set last year. This is Fenty Glow, and I really think they should make this part of their permanent collection because it's so pretty. It doesn't look like it's going to be pretty, and yet it is. It's just very natural, very, like, sun-kissed looking on the skin. So I really like that one. Next up, we've got Crush on Cupid. I did have Fuego something or other. I can't remember what it was called. It's the orange one, but it had, like, a lot of glitter in it, and I just didn't look right on my skin, so I did declutter that one ages ago. I wish they had just like a matte orange, I'd be so happy with that. This one's quite pretty as well. And then this one here is Strawberry Drip. Just looking for a clean finger. And I find that these blend really nicely and they do last all day on the cheeks. And then part of their holiday duo this year, their Peach Face, Resting Peach Face, I think it was called, was this shade here, which is called Peach Face. So there's that one. So in looking at them, like I said, I reach for Fenty Glow way more than I reach for Rosé Latte. So I'm going to let the Rosé Latte one go. And these are fairly similar, but I do get more use out of this one than the other. This one was Strawberry Drip, I believe. Yes, so I'm going to keep Strawberry Drip. But I'm going to see if a friend of mine would like the other. And then I'm going to keep these three. I've got three MAC blushes. So this one is Melba and Pinch Me. And then this was part of their... Oh gosh, it was in the spring of this year. What was that called? That collection. I can't remember what it was called. Does it say on here? Mm, of course not. Uh, anyways, this shade is under my plum, and this is one of their extra dimension blushes. So let's just quickly do some swatches of these. I feel like Melba is just an OG blush shade. And then we've got Pinch Me. It's a really pretty rosy kind of toned. I wore this one just the other day. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but again, nothing glittery, so I can live with that. And there the three of them are. These are actually pretty similar, these two. I'm definitely keeping Melba. I love those kind of tones, like the burnt apricot kind of shade. I love that. Between Pinch Me and the other, so let's talk about Patrick Ta. This is the uh, Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duo in Do We Know Her? I love the little covers on the cream products. So this is one I actually prefer the cream to the powder in this duo. There's the cream shade. And there is the powder. Of course, they can be layered as well. I don't wear this like frequently, but I do like it. And I don't want to get rid of it because it really was a pricey item, and I wear it enough to justify keeping it. So and that's what I'm going to do. I have these two, what are they called? The puff paints, the liquid blush serums from Natasha Denona. This one's in the shade Tan, and I believe this one is called Daria. The shade names aren't on the packaging anywhere, but I'm pretty sure that's what that one's called. This one in particular, I took a bit of a risk because it's brown. 
And I thought, eh, I don't know, but let's see. And I'm so glad that I did because it is actually beautiful once applied. It doesn't look it here, but it's, again, just sticking with that like burnt apricot kind of tone. I just find this makes me look like I've been out in the sun. And it gives me that like, you know, like two days after a sunburn kind of look. And it's actually really pretty. And then Daria as well is quite pretty, but quite different from Tam. There's that one. Again, these blend out without any issues and they last all day on the cheeks, which is very important to me. But as an example of one that just has no lasting power, the Cheek Dew from ColourPop. This one is in uh, Cherish You. It's a pretty shade, but it does not last. And you would think something that's as pigmented as that, you would think that it would last, but sadly, no. It's just one of those products that like, by lunchtime, I look at myself and I'm like, what the hell happened? Where did my blush go? It just, I don't know if it like evaporates or what it does. It's very impactful when you first put it on, but it doesn't have any staying power. So I'm going to part ways with that one. And this one here is from Hourglass. This is one of the ambient lighting blushes in At Night. This one is like perfect for winter time because it can, depending on where my brush hits on it, it can get quite deep but not so deep that it looks ridiculous on my skin. Now, this one here from Becca is Wild Honey. Again, I feel like this is a bit of an OG shade. It's been around for absolutely years. Another one of those ones that doesn't look like it's gonna be particularly pretty on the skin, and yet it's just very natural looking. Just peachy enough that it doesn't look weird. Like it doesn't look like you just applied a bunch of bronzer in a strange place. But I just, for the lols, want to compare it to Honeysuckle from KVD. Just to see if, yeah, no, they're different enough for sure. Honeysuckle is more of like a muted rose, whereas Wild Honey definitely has that more bronzy kind of element to it, so. I will keep that. I just was wondering if they were dupes of each other, but they're not. Another blush that gives you that like day after a sunburn kind of look is this one here from Bare Minerals. This is their Bolonzer, and I have it in Kiss of Copper. And I have to go in with a very light hand. It doesn't look like I've ever worn this at all, but I just like tap it and we're good to go uh, because this, it, oh, it packs a punch, let me tell you. I think that's just, one swipe down. And it's got just enough of like a satiny finish that it catches the light, but it's not um, glittery at all or shimmery. So tone that down about 20 notches and it looks beautiful on my complexion, but a little goes a very long way. So this one here is from KBD and this is in the shade Luminary. That's going to be way too much, but that's okay. It's a heavy handed swatch. At least you get to see the color. So that's that one. And then we've got the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Blush in Pink Soap. And this was sent to me by a very lovely subscriber. I really appreciate that. This one is more of like a moussey kind of texture, not as liquidy as the KVD, and yet still very blendable. I love the shade of this one. There's that beautiful rose kind of tone. And then this one here is from Milk Makeup, and it is in, I don't think it says on here, it's whatever the bright red one is, of their Bionic Blushes. I do prefer the packaging that has the point 
like the Lisa Eldridge and the KVD. It's just easier for application purposes, but there's that shade. I should probably shake these before I apply them, but that's okay. And then this one I just picked up, and I haven't worn it yet. This is the Bear With Me Luminous Cheek Serum from NYX. And this one is in the shade Peach Bronze, which sounds right up my alley. Nice pointed application thing. Applicator, I guess, would be the correct terminology. You know what, that's enough. We're, we can make do with that. Yeah, I like that shade. It feels a little bit more slippery than the other two. Almost like there's a little bit more oil in it or something. It's a really pretty shade. I am going to keep all four of those. I've got two other liquid highlighters here. So this one is from Rare Beauty in the shade Joy. Let me tell you, these Hacky Punch. A little goes a very long way with these. So I usually just put like one little drop and then blend from there because these just keep blending and keep blending and keep blending. So there is definitely a learning curve, especially if you're fair or complected like me, because uh, as you can see, it's just still going and going and going. <laughs> that was just like one drop of it. So they definitely pack a punch. I think it's really pretty. I, I almost find it to be a bit too pigmented, to be honest, because if you just happen to use just a shade, like a hair too much, you're in trouble. But I can always just like bounce a little bit of foundation on top of it to tone it down. I do really like the color, so I want to keep this one. And then the other liquid one here is from Say, and this is in the shade Poppy, and it's their Dew Blush. an interesting color. It's almost like an electric coral. I, I'm kind of neutral about this one. I'm not in love with it. I don't dislike it. If there's a color that you like, I think you'll like the blush, but it's not like must-have status. However, having said that, I am going to keep it. It is fairly new to me. I think I bought it maybe in the springtime. And it is pretty. So I will continue using it, and I have used it. Um, I'm just not like super in love with it. It's not my favorite. We'll just put it that way. It's not my favorite. Oh, there is another one sitting here. This one's from Bite. It's one of the Daycation Whipped Blushes in Watermelon Marg. And it's very unfortunate packaging. It looks like a <laughs> very disappointing uh, peen, shall we say? <laughs> But at any rate, I just find it so hard to get the product out. I returned the other shade of this that I bought, and I have to be honest, I haven't worn this one. I should have returned both of them because I'm just not in love with these products. I'm just not. I, it's a weird color. It has like, it's not like shimmery, but it's got almost like an iridescence to it that I just find strange. I don't like the packaging. I don't like how hard I have to squeeze to get the product out. And altogether, I think it's just too cool toned for my skin tone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna part ways with it. I don't enjoy using that one. All right, let's move back to the world of powder blushes for a bit. So we'll talk about this one here from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Luminous Rouge in Love Language. It's a loose blush, and that has taken a little bit to get used to. Bit of a learning curve with it. And again, it's one of those blushes where a little goes a long way. But it is quite pretty. And I do like that it is a rather toned down luminosity to it. Like, it's not glittery, but it does catch the light nicely. It is like a nice satin shade. So I am going to hold on to this one. 
So this one here is the newest blush that I've added to the assortment. This one's from Makeup by Mario in the shade Desert Rose. And I haven't worn this on the skin yet as it just got delivered a little while ago. Uh, I'm going to skip over the stained portion. But this kind of tone is right up my alley as well. I really like burnt apricot kind of shades and I really love um, rose tones because this is very natural to like what my skin actually flushes to so it just looks like I've exerted myself which I like. I also recently picked up this one here from Mented Cosmetics and this is in the shade Peach for the Stars. I found it at Winners or Marshalls, I'm not sure which one. The problem with finding makeup there is that you can't always preview the shades and don't know that I would have bought this one. In fact, I know that I wouldn't have bought this one had I been able to even just see it in the pan because it is quite deep for my skin tone and it also is quite shimmery. Well, let's talk Judy's Place. This one here is the Blushed Rouge Duo in Volume 2. There are the two shades in there. And these are so soft just so smooth. I prefer the lighter shade to the deeper one, but I can sort of blend them together and go in with a really light hand. I like that they are both matte finish. That's my preference for blush. I just prefer a matte finish. I wear this one more often than that, but with a very light hand, that one's workable for me. And this is a blush from Vive in the shade Cherub. This is really pretty pink. Again, I have to go in with a light hand on this one. Because it is very pigmented, but it is very pretty as well. And then we have this one here from Dior, and this is in the shade Actrice. This is really a pretty coral shade. I wore this quite frequently during the summer. I've almost got the lettering rubbed off. There's that one. And then another very coral blush that I have is this one here from Surat. And this is in Brillant, or Brillant, I don't know how to say it. I always sound like a fool when I try to say the French names of things. All right, hold on to your butts. This one is very pigmented, but very, very blendable. And I just think it's really pretty and fun. Now, this one here from Moira Cosmetics I bought because it's beautiful. I mean, the ombre, the imprinting on the pan, all of it. Gorgeous. This one is the Signature Ombre Blusher in Orange Blossom, number five. The problem is it is so pigmented, like so pigmented. And even when I use the lightest of hands, it's still just like nonstop color. <laughs> It would actually be a really pretty eyeshadow, but it is just way too intense. It looks ridiculous on my skin. Even if I just like lightly tap and then go in, it just picks up way too much. So as pretty as it is, I need to let it go. And although it would make a really pretty eyeshadow, I have like complete orange monochromatic palettes from BH Cosmetics. I don't need to keep this. All right, we are narrowing them down. They all fit in frame now, so <laughs> definite progress. Okay, let's uh, let's hop back to creams. Let's talk about stick blushes. So this one here is from Hourglass, and it is in the shade Devoted. And I know, without even having to swatch it, that I'm keeping this because I do use this one quite frequently. It's just this beautiful rose shade. Again, very blendable very natural on the skin and I absolutely love that one. And then this one here is from Nude Sticks in the shade Bareback. Comes with a brush on one end and then the blush. 
blush on the other. deeper and duskier than the one from Hourglass. But again, very, very pretty and natural on the skin, so I definitely want to keep that one as well. And I want to talk about this one next from LYS. This is the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Self Love. I want to see how this one compares to these ones. It is definitely deeper. This is one that I find just keeps moving further and further back in the drawer because I'm not using it. And I mean, it's hitting along the same notes as the other two, but the other two are more in line with my skin tone. So I'm going to see if my friend who has the deeper complexion than me would like this one. Now I also want to compare this one, which is from Rare Beauty, and this is in Nearly Apricot. I know this isn't going to be the same at all. These are so smooth, these ones. I really enjoy them. It's more similar than I thought it was going to be. It definitely has that apricot undertone to it. I really like that one. I want to keep that. I would like to compare this one as well from Mulani, and this is the Nude Kiss, no, Cheek, what? <laughs> Sorry. The Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in Nude Kiss. Oh my goodness, I got confused with all the kisses going on. Similar, but definitely deeper. I think I just need these two for these kind of tones in a cream shadow. I don't need that many cream blushes because I can't possibly use them all before they start going bad. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I would rather pan an hourglass blush than the Milani because I will feel less pain and less buyer's remorse passing along a Milani than a uh, whatever $50 blush the hourglass was. So I've got two of them here from Melt. I can tell you already I'm not getting rid of either of them. These are the cream blush lights. So on the one hand we have Cali Dream and then this one is Honey Thief. If I had to choose only one I would go with Honey Thief but I like them both a lot. So that's Cali Dream and this one is Honey Thief. Kelly Dream and Honey Thief. I love these blushes so much. And then the last cream blush is from Shiseido and this is in the shade Momoko 03. It's one of their minimalist whipped powder blushes. Is that what it says? Yeah, whipped powder blush, but it's not a powder. And again, it's just that like gorgeous burnt apricot kind of shade. It's not like liquidy. It's very much like a mousse. I've got a cat hair on me. Fantastic. It's beautiful. I love this blush so much. All right, we are down to the very last drags here. This one here is from Odin's Eye. It's so cute. And this is the Alba Fruit Blusher in Ripe Papaya. such a pretty color. Keeping that for sure. This is one of the ones from Huda Beauty, the Glowish Blush in Caring Coral. This is shockingly small. I really did not expect that the pan would be this small. But it is a pretty blush at any rate. Okay, over here we've got Kiko Milano. Love this packaging. 
This is the Dolce Diva Baked Blush Trio in Better Coral. It's like a little bit of a swirl of colors here. Very subtle difference between them. So if I just blend it all together, it is quite the glowy blush. And I am not going to keep this one. As much as I love the packaging, I just don't love how glowy that is. Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> I don't wear them that glowy. Like, that's almost highlighter level. Another one that is very much more like a highlighter than a blush to me is this one from NARS in the shade Tempted. But whereas I would never wear a bright pink highlight like that, this one is much more natural looking. And I find that I can pull this off as more like a blush topper. And it adds a little bit of luminosity without being over the top. And also I only just got this very recently, so I don't want to get rid of it yet. But my god, I wish that Shoppers Drug Mart would start including shade descriptions on their website so that I knew if it was a satin finish or a matte finish. <laughs> because they also don't have swatch pictures. But at any rate, I will hold on to this one for now. So then let's talk about these two here from e.l.f. This one is in Cantaloupe. And this one is in the shade White Peach. White Peach I do wear. Cantaloupe, not so much. But I will just do a little comparison for you. I like both shades in the White Peach one. And then here for Cantaloupe. I wish I could switch this highlighter for the one in White Peach because I do like this highlighter better, but I prefer this blush. So what do I do? Well, you know what? They're little, so I'm going to keep both of them, but I really wish that it was like this was the duo right there. So that brings us to this one here from Il Maquillage, and I don't know what happened with the packaging, but when I undo it, that comes out and I can't like snap it back into place, and it just is always loose and out and about, which is unfortunate because I actually quite like the blush. The packaging is constantly falling apart on me and annoying me. This one I am going to part ways with only because of the packaging, because I just can't figure out how to salvage that packaging. But it is a pretty shade for what it's worth. The shade is Poker Face and it's the Mineral Baked Blush. Or Luminoso from Milani. I have had this almost as long as I've had kids. Like I've had this for so long. And it's honestly, it's not my favorite blush. But it's pretty. Like it, I don't, I have such a love hate with this stupid blush. Like again, it's got a bit of a luminous finish, but not over the top. I, th I think, honestly, I think I'm just sick of looking at it. Like, I dug down eventually just to see how much further the pan is on this, because, like, it, it can't be that deep, and yet it is, it's like a bottomless pit. It's just never going to end. <laughs> it's never going to end. So, uh, I don't want to give up. I'm not giving it a belly button. It looks ridiculous. Uh... Like, it's, it's almost even with the packaging now, like... Oh, you know what? I'm just going to keep the damn thing. Alright, so there are the blushes that are going to be leaving my collection. There are 12 of them in total, and I feel really good about that. I didn't have a goal in mind, but I didn't think that I would actually declutter 12. So I'm kind of impressed with that, and I thank you for joining me on this journey of visiting my blush collection and paring it down somewhat. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for keeping me company as I went through this exercise, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye!